Welcome to another episode of Tips from the Swamp by Absolute Control Irrigation Specialists Incorporated. In this video I'm going to be going over how to use a volt ohm meter to test different components and check for continuity and voltage of different devices. First thing is I'm going to be looking for continuity which is a continuous connection. So to do that I move this to meter down to where it would read for continuity. Meter when it settles in will read OL which is open line. If I connect the two probes together it will now show me a all zeros which is a direct short. This position can be used to test things like fuses. Here's a, a good example. Here is a fuse. To test this we take one probe, put it on one end of the fuse, we test by putting the other probe on the other end of the fuse and you'll notice it goes to all zeros which indicates a direct short and not an open. If that were an open circuit which looks like this, that fuse would be bad. The next thing I can test is a diode. A diode is a small electrical device, acts like a gate which only allows electricity to go through it one way. On the diode you'll notice there's a highlighted or silver line on one end, not on the other end. That silver line indicates that's the positive end. So I want to take and put the one probe, which is my negative or common probe, on one end and a positive probe on the positive side and you'll notice that the meter does not give us a reading. If I reverse that so that the negative probe is to the positive side and the positive probe on the negative side you'll notice we get a reading. Should I get that reading with this diode in the correct position that would say that the diode is defective. The next thing I can test is a lightning protection device called a metal oxide varistor or MOV or MOV. To do that again in continuity we put one probe on one leg Another probe on another leg. You'll notice there is no reading. If I had a reading showing a direct short, it means that this metal oxide varistor is shorted out and that whatever that's connected to is probably not working because it's shorted to ground. So that's how we would test for that. Okay, the next thing I'm going to look at is resistance. Resistance is developed by coils that create not a complete circuit but a partial circuit. But it's what you're looking for when you're dealing with solenoids. So I set my meter to read for ohms resistance. And you'll notice that I have two rotors here, one Toro, one Rainbird. They have solenoids on them. You need to know what those solenoids correct resistance readings are to test and see if they are good. In this particular case I'm going to hook up my probes to the Toro solenoid and it comes up around 28 ohms and that is the correct reading for that particular solenoid. Now different manufacturers have different readings. If that had been open that would say it was an open circuit. If that went to all zeros it would say that solenoid was shorted. Now I'm going to hook up to the Rainbird solenoid and that's showing me a resistance reading of 34.6 which is a correct reading for that particular solenoid. So again you need to know what solenoid it is, what manufacturer, so you know what that resistance reading should be. The next thing I'm going to look at is measuring voltage on a DC battery. This is a 9 volt alkaline battery. And I turn my meter to where it reads for DC voltage, which is voltage DC. And on this, there is a positive and a negative terminal. And I put my probe on the positive terminal. Oops. Put my probe on the positive terminal. Probe on the negative terminal. And it's showing me. 9.51 volts, which means this battery is good. If I happen to reverse those probes so that I'm one on 
my positive on negative, negative on positive, it'll show me the voltage, but it'll show me the negative voltage. It also indicates that the unit is good. But it should be this way, so you're looking at positive voltage. And last but not least, I'm going to look at the voltage on a transformer. This is a dual output transformer that Rainbird uses. If you look at the top of this transformer, it will show you what the different output wire colors should have on them. In this case, it's 26.5 volts on orange-orange and 8.5 volts on blue-blue. Now, I'm, you'll notice that I have the open ends of the transformer so I can measure them. Okay, you want to make sure that you don't touch those if it's turned on because they will short and they will potentially short this transformer out. So, let me set that. Okay, now I'm going to plug in that transformer. So it fires up, has voltage on it. Okay, now it's plugged in. I'm going to set my meter now to read AC voltage, which is V with a squiggly line where it says VAC. Remember what I said? The two orange wires should be about 26 and a half. Well, that will range from 26 and a half to usually something in 29s. And in this particular case, we're at 29.1617. But that is the correct output for the two orange wires on this transformer. Again, typical Rainbird transformer, that is output for the valves and the sprinkler heads. Then on the two blue wires, again, and it does not matter which probe goes to which because it is AC voltage, which is alternating current, it does not have positive and negative. And now I put it to there, and it should be 8.5 to 9.5 volts, and we're getting 9.5 volts, which is the high side, which is good reading. It says this transformer is good. So now you've seen how to use the voltron measure to measure different voltages and correct readings for the different components that you might run into in your irrigation system. I hope you enjoyed the video and that it was helpful. Give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss any new videos. We also appreciate your comments and suggestions. Remember, we offer refurbished rotors, solve field service problems, and provide shipping labels. Our promise is a quick turnaround on all repairs. Visit us on our website, www.absolute-control.com. Thank you again from Gator with Tips from the Swamp.